What is going on? Welcome to another Caleb Sells live stream. Today I'm going to jump into some items I thrifted over the last week. Uh, and I tried to pick out like just the good stuff or things that would be really interesting to know instead of just going through everything. Uh, I've been listing a lot of stuff, so uh, I'm kind of just saving this for the last. So I want to come on live so I can go through it with you guys uh, before I get it listed. Uh, feel free to throw some uh, things in the chat. Um, I love to answer questions as I do this because uh, that's one of my favorite things to do is just help people. And the best way to do that is answer your specific questions here on the live. Good morning, 24-7 Hustle. What's up, man, Antonio? Appreciate you guys being here. I'm going to jump into the first item here. I actually already listed this one. I posted it on my Instagram if you saw that. Really nice cable knit wool linen blend vintage polo Ralph Lauren sweater. There, we're back. Hopefully you guys uh, are still here. Um, this had so many like cool, good keywords, things going for this. So I knew this was going to be good money. I think I paid up. Uh, it was like 15 bucks, but then it had some discounts and so maybe like uh, 11, 12 bucks, something like that. It does have these cool little elbow patches as well. Yep. Fisherman cable knit. Fisherman made it into my title as well. Good call out on that, Antonio. Um, so yeah, this is a sweet item. I think I listed this for 75 or 80. Um, comps are kind of all over the place because some people don't, you know, put the right keywords in their listing. So they weren't actually this item. So some were lower and Then there's obviously some vintage polo items. that are just crazy expensive. So I don't really know. I'm not like an expert in polo. So I don't know what makes those ones like super, super valuable. But to me, this looked like a, between a 50 and a hundred dollar sweater. So I listed at 75, 80 and I'd take 50 for it. <clears throat> had to get that one back on the rack because that one's already listed. I didn't want to get mixed up with my stuff that's not listed here. Happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining in. I'll jump into the next item here. So I actually went thrifting this morning. Uh, there were some discounts. I got $20 off my whole order based on if you spend a certain amount, you get a certain amount off. And then I also had like a $5 off for every hundred you spend. So I got $20 off. Um, so the price tag on this was $14.06. Where's the camera? There it is. I probably paid realistically like 12 bucks for it. But this is a Peter Millar golf jacket. Crown Sport is a really good line uh, within Peter Millar. But honestly, any of the Peter Millar outerwear, here's another logo. You can see it when you're just kind of walking by. This is a super nice, like, soft shell jacket. The Peter Millar outerwear sells amazing. Um, so I wasn't afraid to pay 12 bucks. I didn't even look up comps. I would guess low end 40 to 50, but I wouldn't be surprised if this was like a $75 piece. Great timing to find that as well, you know, with uh, it still being cold, but golf season kind of starting and people wanting to get out on the course. Um, so I think that was so quick. This morning, I also found three new tags Levi's, which was really rare for Goodwill. Uh, so this one was like 10 bucks. See if it will catch this tag here. 10 bucks. Um, new with tags here. And these are just 505s, but honestly, a good style in 505s. The uh, price tag on these at like the retail store would be 70 bucks. Uh, so to get them for 10, I usually list these for like. 30 to 40 bucks, depending on style and size. This is 33 by 34. So if this hasn't been hemmed, that's a really good size. So probably list these for 40 bucks plus shipping. How do you handle scanning packages when dropping off? Uh, I use Pirate Ship. And so on Pirate Ship, I'm able to do a scan form. Uh, I know that there is some discrepancy whether that actually... Uh, saves you when it comes to eBay's metrics and everything. But honestly, when they scan that, I have not had a problem. I have 100% tracking uploaded within the time frame. Uh, so I've just been doing that. And that's uh, really helped them not be as frustrated with me when I'm bringing in tons of packages. Uh, so even if you know something does come up along the lines, it's been worth it to just have an easier process when I go to drop them off. What's up, ACC? Just going through this thrift haul. 
hanging out. And here's another pair, exact same thing. Uh, 505s, 33 by 34. Paid about nine bucks for those. Those are the exact same jeans, just different color. And then my third new tags Levi's, these ones are cheaper, so like eight bucks. These are like a 511 stretch, so that's the slim cut. But gray and black sell really well for me. Um, so retail price on these is 70 bucks as well. These ones are 38 by 34, but still that 34 inseam, it's gonna get these sold quick. So I was really happy to find three brand new Levi's because that's like twenty four seven hustle says you probably know this, but make sure you turn uh, international shipping off to avoid a Vero. I don't actually think I've had that problem with Levi's, so I didn't actually know that. So appreciate that. I usually only pick up Levi's premium jeans unless a really cool vintage pair. Wendy. Well, Wendy, I think that the Levi's premiums is a, a great line to be on the lookout for. And then also vintage ones are also obviously really good to be on the lookout for. But new at tag sells great for me. And also really good sizes sell well for me. And then there's certain cuts, even of the modern stuff. Uh, like if you find baggy fit stuff, I think it's 560 or 569. It's like a, a baggy and it's straight leg all the way down. Those um, sell really well. Um, and then the basic cuts like 501, 505, 550 in really good sizes sell great for me super fast. Yesterday I listed some 36 by 36. Um, Levi's 505, I think. And I sold for 30 bucks in like a couple hours, but 36 by 36 is such a unique size, but it's a great size. Uh, so that's why that sold so quickly. So if you add those little things, you can, you know, maybe find a few more Levi's when you're outsourcing. Antonio uses self-scanning, never had an issue. Uh, my post office that I go to does not have self-scanning. So I would, I would try that if they had it. Change the shipping or sell them as pre-owned with pictures showing the tags. Okay. Well, I have to create a new policy for my new tags Levi's. I think it's similar with Nike, but I'm not really sure. But thanks for the tip on that. Can't really afford to have my eBay account shut down these days. Have you ever heard of Ryan Michael brand of shirt? For some reason, that's ringing a bell. I just was listening to another YouTube video about high sell-through rate dress shirts or button-up shirts. Um, so I, I don't know what the tag looks like, and I don't know if I've ever found it. But uh, if you have some knowledge to drop on that, Jay Scott, uh, you just let, let us know. I really got a gnat in here. You find a lot of very cool stuff. How do you stop yourself from keeping things for yourself? Well, I do keep things for myself occasionally, but what's funny is like when I find something really cool, even if it's in my size, I just sell it because I'd rather make the money, <laughs> to be honest. Um, so I really have not kept like anything expensive, but like your everyday basics, like uh, this Under Armour hoodie, I think the comments covering up this Under Armour hoodie, um, is something that I kept. I paid five bucks for it and I like liked the neutral colorway. So I just tried it on. It fit. Um yeah, I'm not wearing anything else thrifted, am I? Oh yeah, I have like a basic uh tee underneath that I thrifted for you know under five bucks. Uh so I keep some basics for myself. Uh if I find anything really good that's in my wife's size, I usually let her try that on because uh but for myself I'm just you know I don't need anything too fancy. I just uh would rather sell it and make the money. Hi, Jennifer. She says, do you go thrifting every day, once a day? How much would you say you spend in total in one haul? Love your videos. Thanks for breaking it down the way you do. You're very welcome. I really hope it's helpful. I get a lot of those comments that I'm like straight to the point, just trying to get the information out there. And that's my goal. Um, yeah, I just want to help people and, you know, rambling on about nonsense doesn't, isn't, you know, helpful. It can be entertaining. So there's different styles, but I'm just trying to educate. So uh, appreciate those kind words. 
I don't thrift every day. I thrift every Tuesday morning at my local Goodwill. If I need more inventory, I'll hit other local stores uh, like first thing in the morning. And then I come back and do my normal daily routine. Uh, but my big thrift day is actually Thursday. So tomorrow I'll be out thrifting. Uh, I, I wake up at, you know, 6, 630 and uh, hit a lot of stores. Well, I actually hit one store where I get a lot of items and then I'll, depending on how well I do, I'll keep going or I'll, you know, call it quits early. So Levi's size 40 waist can't move. They are corduroy. Um, check your pricing on the Levi's corduroys because I sold some 38s, which I know is not 40s, but I sold some 38s in like three days uh, recently because corduroys, man, they sell well. Um, so definitely check your pricing. I think I sold mine. I listed them for like 26 plus shipping and then took an offer of 22 plus shipping. Um, so you can't really get a premium price on a bad size, like a 40. Um, so it's probably a pricing thing. But 40 definitely sells slower for me too. 24-7 Hustle. I just saw your little profile picture and it's a, a polo guy. So I think I know who you are. So shout out to you, man. Uh, it's EU specific for Nike and Levi's new with tags. So yeah, I'll have to make a policy to you know turn those off. I don't really want to catch a Vero. So J. Scott, Western style, says their Western style shirts, great sell through, found one yesterday, Ryan Michael. I'm going to look up the picture of the tag and yeah, put that in my memory bank. Appreciate that. It's nice that this can go both ways. You know, I'm learning stuff from you guys. I, I'm here to learn too. I'm on YouTube all the time learning. Um, I know a lot of resellers, like once they kind of start doing YouTube, it's hard to keep up with the YouTube content, like consuming it. And I agree, it is difficult. Um, but I try to key in on people that are really educational so that I can keep my knowledge, you know, really solid. Do you stay away from blazers and suits? I really do, to be honest. Um, you can make so much good money selling blazers and suits. So if it's something that you're interested in and you want to learn about and you don't mind taking the time or storing them because they're a little bit bulkier, I highly recommend getting into it and learning it. Uh, it is something that if you don't really know what you're doing, like just going and buying something that looks cool or you think will be good, it, it's probably a pretty risky category because there's just certain things that won't sell. If you sell blazers, you might want to keep like a measuring tape in your pocket because uh, a lot of them are purchased big and then fully customized to somebody's size. So uh, I had a really cool Pendleton blazer that I found and it was size 44 long which I thought was an amazing size and it was super cool wool. It was green and it had the uh, black watch plaid, which is like green and Navy. It was super cool, super old, I think eighties. And the sleeves were like maybe three quarter sleeves. <laughs> uh, so somebody still did buy it. I, I, you know, they left good feedback. Um, so, you know, no complaints, but I listed it for about half the value because I knew that that was just not the right sleeve length, but I didn't know that in real time. I just saw a Pendleton wool blazer and threw it in the cart and carried on my way. 10 high, what are 10 high sell through rate clothing items that you can, uh, reasonably be able to find often? That's a great question. I don't know if I can, uh, rattle off 10 right off the top of my head. Um, let me jump into... I'll just show like two or three items here from my thrift haul and maybe we'll, you know, come up with some items there. Okay. I paid about five bucks uh, for these Duluth trading shorts. Reason I grabbed these is these are the dry on the fly model and they are cargo. They're not cargo, but they're dry on the fly model, which it's like super outdoorsy, really high quality material. And in a good size of men's XL with the shorter inseam and their nylon. Um, so going into short season, I sold these all like, like crazy last year for between 25 and 30 bucks. So the sell through rate is going to be slower right now on eBay, but it's going to climb over the next couple months. So Duluth dry on the fly, not all Duluth shorts, not the flex ballrooms, unless it's super cheap. Um, but the dry on the fly shorts are good. I know I mentioned this earlier, but Levi's has became one of my favorite brands to sell because if you source the right sizes, that's extremely high sell through rate and almost every thrift store you go in is going to have at least a half a dozen pair of Levi's to look through. 
Sorry about that. I am uh, a little under the weather. Here we have some Boy Scout uniform shorts, vintage ones, union made. This is a good high suit sell through rate item. I've never kept these in my store longer than three months. So now that we're going into uh, summer, these are size 32, great size. They have the elastic waist. And just this color stood out to me, but you can see on the buttons. Let's see if that'll focus. Okay, it's freezing like every five minutes on my screen for like 10 seconds. Let me know if that got, is freezing for you guys or if I should just carry on when that happens and keep going because it's like making me pause to like wait for it to be done. But if it's still going through, I'll just keep plowing through. <clears throat> but Boy Scouts uniform shorts, they also have like nylon ones that are more modern. Those sell great with the cargos. Um, so yeah, those. That's a really good high sell through rate item. Timothy, appreciate your kind words here. Thank you for your style of video and honesty. Antonio, how much is your item purchase? I'm guessing you, you mean how much do I spend on average um, for an item? At the store where I source the most items, I'm usually between 6 and $7 per item, and that's for anywhere from 50 to 150 items. Um, I would say at Goodwill, I'm usually averaging kind of around the similar range. Uh, jeans and pants, they really price up like closer to 10 bucks on every pair and jackets are 10 to 15. Uh, but if I have like a high shirts day where I'm buying a lot of shirts, those are usually more like five bucks. And I get those little discounts I was mentioning. So I would say uh, probably across the board, I'm between six and seven dollars per item. Timothy says, do you think hybrid shorts sell better than board shorts? I honestly don't find tons of good swim shorts or board shorts in my area. Um, in Ohio, the season to be outside and using them is just uh, very short. And there's not a lot of like uh, outdoor water sports. Like there's not a lot of like skiing and no surfing, obviously, and things like that. So I would not really be the expert uh, on that. Uh, but I would guess hybrid shorts would sell better just because there, there's more use. It's more functional, especially in men's clothing. Function carries a big weight in the value. If it's really functional, people are going to buy it because they need it. What are the right sizes in Levi's? I would say if the inseam is longer than the waist, that's going to be a good size. 32 by 34, great size. 34 by 34, 34 by 36, great size. Uh, 30 by 34, great size. Uh, really, um, 32 inseam and bigger is going to be better. Um, but 34 inseam and 36 inseam are going to be the best sizes for sure. Okay, thanks for the feedback on the freezing. I'm just going to carry on, and if it skips out for a second, uh, I ask me to clarify if we miss something. So, Jennifer says, last question. I want to know if anyone might know about vintage World War II era clothing with handmade patches, can't find comps or anything like it. That's something that I would definitely try to find an expert in that field to help you with. I Definitely not me at all. I don't really know anything about that. Um, I don't really know of any resources for that kind of stuff because I've never came across it. If you have any, like maybe vintage stores in your town, I might want to recommend like maybe asking, like seeing if they have like an Instagram and sending them a message to be like, do you guys know about World War II clothing, things like that? Because uh, some of that stuff can be worth insane money and some of it's absolutely worth nothing. And I would have no idea the difference between the two of them. So sorry, I'm not able to help there, but maybe that's helpful uh, finding like a local vintage store, contacting them on Instagram or something like that. How much are you selling per day now? Thanks for all the content. Um, I'm currently listing 18 items per day and I currently have slightly more sold than listed. Um, but I did take a break in January where I was listing only five per day. Um, so my store is still reacclimating. 
Uh, so I'd say on average between 15 and 20 items per day. Nick says, do you think the new 2024 rule where sellers have to take a 1099 will drive sellers away? I think it will probably reduce the amount of sellers. Um, to me, uh, you know, I'm already keeping track of all that stuff and paying taxes and all that good stuff. So uh, it really doesn't bother me if people are getting out for that reason. I mean, realistically, even if you did make, you know, under the I think it's 25,000 that eBay sends you a 1099. Uh, even if you sold, you know, 22,000 on eBay, hypothetically, you should be paying taxes on it. So, uh, you know, the people that are doing it the right way aren't going to be affected. And the people that aren't doing it the right way are the ones that either have to clean it up a little bit or they might just leave. So I'm not really sure. I'm kind of curious to see. Who knows? Sarah says, I carry a small measuring tape in my purse, and I think that's a great idea. For jeans, I hold them up to myself, and, like, I just kind of know where it falls, like, if it's going to be a 30 or a 32. And really, I just want to make sure that it's not, like, a 27. Uh, the difference between 32 and 31, you know, if it's tagged 32 and it measures 31, that's probably not going to affect the sale much. I am going to include that in the listing. Um, but you really just want to avoid major discrepancies. This is a great uh, tip from RX Vintage Treasures. Um, look for groups on Facebook for your World War II items. That's a great idea. And it looks like um, somebody else here is reaching out and said that they could take a look for you. So I'd lean into those, those resources. Are button shirts that are st single stitch worth more money? Um, I would say single stitch is probably more relate closely related to vintage t-shirts. Uh, I don't know if it really makes much of a difference on vintage button shirts. Um, vintage button shirts, really, to me, like unless it's like a really well-known brand, haven't sold you know particularly well because uh, that's not really what the vintage community is looking for. Unless it's like 50 40s 50s 60s something super old then that'd be considered like true vintage and then there are probably nuances in that category that do influence the price and value but i wouldn't be an expert on that thanks for all the good content i appreciate all your appreciate all your efforts thanks val we're in ohio i'm in the akron canton area so about two hours from pittsburgh i went to thrift in pittsburgh maybe a month ago hit, a, hit up a couple places just to try it out i wanted to see like if i wanted to increase my listings to maybe like 30 40 50 a day hire some employees where am i going to find that type of inventory um so i uh checked out pittsburgh definitely could be a viable option um but i'd probably you know do more in cleveland before i went to pittsburgh uh, I haven't even really explored Cleveland that much, but I just kind of wanted to check out Pittsburgh just for the heck of it. Nick says, thanks for the question. Can you talk about your opinion on promoted listings? Uh, my opinion is uh, if eBay is saying this is what to do to make more sales, that's something that I'm going to be interested in. Um, if you look at the chart of my organic sales versus my promoted sales, uh, way more than half of my sales come from promoted listings. I promote all my items at 5%. Um, so I recommend you doing some uh, testing based on your own items and what you sell. Uh, clothing is a pretty saturated category. So I do believe that my promotion at 5% is one of the contributing factors to me having an over 100% sell through rate store. Um, and in clothing, keeping my cash flow up and keeping those sales moving is pretty much the most important thing in my business. Um, so I'm going to use all the tools that eBay gives me. I use markdown sales. I promote my listings. Um, that being said, if you're selling all Patagonia better sweaters, you don't need to promote. Um, I do because I don't really want to go and take the time and research which items I should and shouldn't promote. Um, but yeah. Derby city flip says, are you a seasonal seller? 
I am not really sure what you mean by that. I sell items all year round. This is my full-time job, full-time income. Uh, if you mean like sh buying items in season, I try to buy the best items when I come across them all year round. I do prioritize listing items that are in season. So if I bought a winter jacket right now, I would make sure I list all my golf polos right now before I list that winter jacket. But I'm not afraid to list a really good winter jacket uh, right now because the really good items in every category sell all year round. Solomon says your point about electronics being known to have value by everyone and Goodwill employees being the main factor is why you focus on clothes was very true last stream, but looking up clothes for sell rate is annoying. <laughs> yeah, it totally can be difficult to find sell through rate uh, on clothing because there are so many nuances and getting the right search terms can be really difficult. Um, but from my perspective, it's just there's so many more missed items in clothing. There's so many uh, more items available. Like when you walk into any thrift store, there's just rack after rack of clothing. And there might be one little section of electronics. And if you don't see something good in that one little section, then you just have to go home empty handed. And I'm already taking the trip to the thrift store. So uh, clothing in my area is what I found been able to find enough items that I can have a high amount of listings per day and keep my business moving. All right, let's jump into some more items here. Okay, this item is a total gamble, but it's an educated gamble. <laughs> the brand name is Woolsey, and it has this really cool logo. Kind of looks like a fox, but maybe it's supposed to be a wolf. I don't know. It's size XL. To me, this looks and feels exactly like a golf jacket, almost like an RLX. I just sold one of these recently. That was in RLX brand, but the very minimal logo, the very minimal tag, the high quality feel, it actually felt like upgraded materials on the sleeves is what kind of tipped me off that this was going to be a good item. And it just had that like performance golf look. Then I looked down on the inside. This is water, waterproof, merino wool, taped seams, water resistant finish four-way stretch windproof like this has all these great features on here uh and just the fact that it is merino wool i can pretty much guarantee this is going to be a really solid piece i looked up the brand like on google i think it's a european brand and the retail prices on their items were way over a hundred dollars some two hundred dollars uh didn't see any comps on ebay so like i said i'm taking a gamble uh, but it was an educated guess because I saw so many things that make me think that this would be worth a good amount. Um, so my initial hunch is maybe 50 bucks, but we'll see. I paid about 10, so we'll see. Hopefully that one will pop up in my best sales in March. All right, that's all the good stuff I got this morning. I got a couple other bread and butter items, but nothing too crazy. Here's a nice little bolo. I got these pants, Vineyard Vines on the go pants. These are like their athletic y, techy performance pants. They're definitely worth way more than just like your standard chinos from them. Looks like I did actually rip the tag off on accident. Um, so I don't remember what I paid for these, probably under 10 bucks. Um, but these are size 33 by 34, so amazing size on top of that. I would guess these are going to sell for 30 bucks in less than a month. Henron TV says, what thrift stores do you go to? Because I go in the mornings and still can't find anything. Well, I go to my local Goodwills and then I go to a local thrift chain. So I would say look in your area for st thrift stores that are not Goodwill or Salvation Army or the bins and search those ones out like mom and pop thrift stores or local chains. I really feel like those can be the honey holes uh, for resellers. And honestly, a lot of times I go to my local Goodwill and I only find one or two items and it's nothing really that great. I'm just picking it up because it's bread and butter and I'm already there. So I wouldn't get discouraged when you don't find anything. Uh, you just have to go consistently and the more times you go and the more knowledge you have, the more consistently you'll be able to find enough stuff.
All right, I paid seven fifty for this item, and I want your guys' opinion on this. Would you have picked this up? This is a chaps, kind of like a knit sweater jacket. So this is like a knit material here. It does have this little flag on it. And it is new at tags. Retail price of 100 bucks, and size 2XL. So let me know in the chat, would you have picked up this item? Jennifer says no. <laughs> okay, answers change to yes once it's new at tags. So let me tell you my thought process. I paid $750 for this. Um, and the things I'm saying, I, I would have looked it up if it was not new at tags. New at tags, I bought this without even thinking about it. Um, but I think even used, like I'm curious to look it up when I go to list it. I'm I'm curious even used if this would uh, still be a good flip. Somebody asked for the material, uh, polyester. So this knit part is still like polyester, kind of like a better sweater knockoff. And then the side parts are just polyester and it is um, fleece. So uh, I don't know what the market shows yet um, because I haven't looked this up to list it. But I know that people that wear Ralph Lauren stuff are very into this flag here. And I know this is a different flag. Um, but I know that this is going to be a good keyword. Flag is going to be a good keyword. And I also know that new it tags $100 and it is 2X size 2XL. It's a full zip jacket. Uh, it does not have a Ralph Lauren flag. It has a chaps flag. So it's not like if this was Ralph Lauren, I, I this probably would be like a $200 retail, $250 retail. Um so yeah, I think this is still going to be a good seller. I would guess, I only paid $750. I would guess it's like a $30 to $40 item. Use maybe $20 to $25. But we'll have to look it up on eBay and see. So I paid $750 for that. So looks like after I explained some things, you guys were on board with me with the new tags, the little flag, uh, good size, all those things. I mean... All those things really piled on top, and I just threw it in the cart, and 750 done deal. Uh, Solomon asked, what's your opinion on the toys category? I'm not really an expert on the toys category, but there are some amazing high sell-through rate items in the toys category, but there is a lot of junk that's absolutely worthless. So just like clothing, being an expert is going to be your best friend um, when it comes to that category, but you can do amazing in that category. Okay, I paid four bucks for this one. This is a Flint and Tinder shirt. So if you see the $10 price tag, I got half off of this price and then an additional 25% off. So five bucks, 25% off. So like, what is that, $3.75 or something? Flint and Tinder is a great brand to be on the lookout for. Sorry, still learning the, <laughs> the camera placement here. Um, this is actually the architecture. I found two of these. So I already listed one, but I put one in here to let you guys know about it. Um, but you actually can find the style code on this one. I talk about this in a lot of my videos, uh, but down on the tag here, right on the back, it says F-210041. I typed that into Google and this pulled up the exact shirt. So I was able to put the proper keywords and these were selling for 40 to 50 bucks on eBay. So, I'm guessing if you just type in um, like Flint and Tinder shirt, you're going to get results all over the place. Um, but the fact that it had uh, the specific model, which was the architect shirt, really helped um, the value there.
Henron says, do you get free electricity because I didn't realize how much electricity was with reselling clothes? I haven't really noticed that problem. All my stuff is LED and I have all these lights uh, on motion sensor lights. So everything turns off when I'm done and my lights for my photo station back there, I just make sure they're off when I'm done and I don't really leave anything running. So I didn't really notice that from my perspective, but electricity in general is getting crazy expensive. So uh, it's definitely something to consider. Solomon asked, does leaving your description blank affect anything? I don't think it necessarily hurts you in the search, but I think if I was a buyer and I saw that somebody didn't put anything in the description, I would be a little bit like, uh, what? You know, it might just make you second, second guess it. Uh, so I would say, um, make sure you put something in there. I just have like a pre-filled uh, message that I put as long as the item's in good condition. And then if it's not in good condition, then I add that on top of my pre-filled little message. Uh, if you want to check out my video, it's I think it's something about how I list 25 items in an hour or something like that. Uh, you can see how I list and what I put in my descriptions. All right, I paid three bucks for a Faherty button up. This is like their classic colorway. So when you see this like salmon-y color in a plaid, you can like spot this across the room. Let's see if they have a style code on here. I really feel like looking up the style code, it's like very annoying, but it is one of the secrets to high sell through. I don't see one on here, but I might throw it into Google Lens and it might pop one up pretty quickly. Um, but this is a great button-down shirt brand to be on the lookout for, especially at three bucks. I paid five bucks for these Levi's Silver Tab. They are shorts, which is a little bit of a bummer. If they were not shorts, these would be like super good. But the tag is down inside the leg, which tells me that this are, these are quite old. Made in USA, and these are from 92. So older than me. Some nice little silver tabs, older than me. Um, they're the loose style, not the baggy. The baggy is great. Um, but the loose style is slightly worse, but you know, it's still all right. I would guess I'll list these for about 30. A lot of this better stuff. I don't really look it up when I'm at the thrift store. Um, so if it's like, if I just know it's good, I'm not looking it up. So that's why I say I would guess, uh, cause I'm just going off of my experience. Uh, but when I go to list, of course, I always look things up and list it at the market value. If I make a mistake, and it's only worth 15. I'm going to list it at 15 because what good is it going to do to list it at 30? I think somebody just started their weed whacker up. So if that is a, a problem, let me know. So that's fun. Oh, you mean washing the clothes? Yeah, I, I agree with um, <clears throat> what uh, Val is saying here. Uh, I only wash things if there is like visibly dirty, a smell, a stain, something like that. So I'm not washing all day long. Do you photograph everything flat lay? I've heard some resellers recommend hanging versus flat lay. I do flat lay for everything except dresses. Um, I just recently rebuilt my photo station. It is a uh, vertical flat lay. So it's at like a 45 ish degree angle uh, to help my back a little bit. But I think the flat lay just looks the best personally. I feel like most items on hangers, the sleeves kind of uh, shrug over and they shrug down and they just don't look as clean. They don't look as crisp. Uh, I know people sell great with a hanger, um, but I would just, I just think it looks a little bit better. Um, so you probably do spend a little bit more time trying to get it all like evenly and all that good stuff. But I think it looks better. So on vintage Levi's, uh, you can look inside the inside button and there's a three digit number or sometimes four digit, but mostly three digit. This is five, four, nine. So then you go to the tag 
and you go to the back of the tag where you see all these numbers. Let's see if I get this to focus. Focus. Come on now. Okay. Well, uh, trust me that there's some numbers on there. <laughs> so you go to the line that starts with the 549 that's on the button because that tells you what factory it was made in. And then there should be two or three digits after that. And the two or three digits after that is the either month or year or week and year, depending on the uh, uh, the different times they had slightly different variations. But uh, so that's how I know these ones are 92. I paid $750 for this Donald Ross performance vest. This is not a brand to be on the lookout for, but there are some good items within the brand. So this is an upgraded line. It's very techy, performancey, all that nice stretchy stuff. But the real reason that I picked this one up is this logo here. Can I get this to focus? So this logo really stood out to me because it's very unique. And I found out this is for a golf course called Sleepy Hollow Golf Club. It's very prestigious. It has this very cool sought after logo. Exactly. It looked like a headless horseman. Um, so Sleepy Hollow is the golf course. And because of that, so what I typically do when I find a golf course that may be worth a bit more is I look up that golf course and then Peter Millar Summer Comfort. Because I know what the typical market is for summer comfort. And they make polos for like, they were like the main one that all the golf courses wanted to make for a while. So if Peter Millard did make polos for that um, golf course, they're going to be on eBay. And then I can say, okay, a normal Peter Millard sells for 20 to 25. The one with these logos are selling for 45 to 50. So that tells me that that particular... And I apply the same principle. So I'm probably going to list this for like 40, 50 bucks just because of that logo. So that is some very deep nuanced stuff, but that's how I'm maximizing uh, my profits with uh, when I'm at the thrift store and why I'm able to find more items because I'm using those little nuances to just eke out some more items every time. I pied. I paid. I paid five bucks for these Polo Ralph Lauren jeans. They are vintage and they're super baggy. So baggy is going to be a great keyword for this. And this is going to be a nice little bread and butter, nothing too crazy. Um, but I would say because it's baggy, I'll probably list for 30 because that's so in style right now. So five into 30 frozen in the middle of my golf course tip, man, that was the money maker. <laughs> All I was saying is I look up the golf course and I look up an item that I know the typical value of. And then I see if that golf course adds or takes away value to the item. So I look up Peter Millar summer comfort. And if that golf course in Peter Millar summer comfort is selling for 15, I know that that course doesn't do anything. It takes away value. If it sells for 50, I know that adds value. Um, so then I translate that kind of equation to my item where that's, uh, performance vest usually is like a 20 to $25 item, but because that course is really amazing, I'm going to list it for 40, 50 bucks. Solomon said, would you do a store review? I'm open to doing that. Um, I, if you follow me on Instagram, uh, message me on Instagram, because I was thinking about posting like. Uh, you know, asking people if they want store reviews and doing like a little live like this and just kind of going over things. Um, but I did would want to look at the store first to make sure that there's enough there that it's be worthwhile to share to multiple people. Uh, but I wouldn't really do that on my own time just because, you know, the whole point is to provide value for multiple people. So you'd have to be willing to let me uh, roast you live. <laughs> but I try to do it kindly and help you. Here is a Foot Joy Hydro Knit golf jacket. 
This is an upgraded line in FootJoy. It's only a half zip. If this was full zip, that would be worth even more. But great size of XL and just that upgraded line. Uh, this is going to be worth a good bit. On the inside, the seams are taped. So I've talked about that in other videos, but that is a good sign that the item is waterproof because that is one way to make it more waterproof is to tape the seams. And it's also just a good sign of good quality construction. So say you see something that is unbranded or you don't know the brand, but you see that the seams are taped on the inside, maybe that's something worth looking up because that's a really good feature. Um, but FootJoy, uh, HydroKnit, yeah, I didn't even look this up because I just know it's an amazing seller, but I would guess 40-ish bucks. And I paid five. Paid five on that. Good morning, Jenny. You are late. You're 46 minutes late, but I'm glad you're here. I paid like two bucks or something for this Untuck It shirt. It's only size medium, which is not great. But the reason I picked this up is the material is nylon and spandex. So this is their most recent performance tech material blend. Uh, so because of that, it sells quicker. And I wouldn't say it necessarily adds value just because the size medium and they're still kind of saturated, but it will sell quicker uh, because of that upgraded material. Um, and at $2 and so it was $2.50 and 25% off of that. So like two bucks, uh, I'm not going to pass that up. Probably list it for 25 and take anything 15 to 25. I paid $7.50 for this Waggle golf polo. This is kind of an up and coming golf brand, kind of like an Instagram brand. Uh, I wouldn't say the comps were like amazing on this. Uh, it'd be worth a pickup if it was cheap, uh, but I was willing to pay up a little bit because of this really nice pattern. You got flamingos, you got palms, you got polka dot, plenty of good keywords uh, to get this thing sold. Uh, size XL, feels super high quality, uh, perfect time of year, golf season. Um, so yeah, I wasn't going to leave this behind because I knew it wouldn't make it to half off. Um, so I would say I'll list it for about 30. Jenny loves flamingos. It was sweet. Waggle sold quickly for Wendy. So that's great. Here's a little bread and butter brand, but it's pretty good. Mizzen in Maine. This was a 2XL trim fit which really increases the sell through. But if you felt this, you'd be like, if I worked in an office, I would only wear these shirts. I mean, this feels amazing. Super high quality. Uh, I list these for about 30. k and resale in the house. Must be Michael looking for some golf polos. I got you, man. I'll be on the lookout. Another great channel there to be on the lookout for. He also uh, and his wife do high sell through rate clothing. So um, another really good educational channel. I was going to be rebuilding and making a video about my uh, photo station. And right when I was about to do that, I saw him come out with a video. And instead of designing and going through all the hassle, I just built what he's told me to build. It's right there. So good stuff. I paid up. I paid 12 bucks, 30 half off, and then 25% off. So 30, that's crazy. Uh, but these are BKE Derek bootleg. But the reason that these, I was willing to pay 12, 34 XL. So these are super long. I can't even get them all in the frame and I'm tall. <gasps> okay, so the extra long inseam on these, going to get them sold quick. Uh, usually sell the BKE, the good styles. Uh, about 35 bucks. So I'll probably list these for 40, maybe 45, uh, just because uh, the extra long inseam. So do 
do I like the photo? Uh, okay, Mike's asked me if I like the photo setup. So mine was very like first attempt. So this is a huge improvement. Um, but the last one I used for so long because it's like I never wanted to take the time to like take a whole day off from taking photos and tear it down and make it better. Um, so the biggest thing was just raising the height. Um, so it's way better on my back. I'm still trying to figure out the nuance. Like I had a, such a good system last time for like where to put my yardstick and how to reach the bag and go super fast and blah, blah, blah. Uh, so I'm still figuring out the flow. Uh, and then I'm still trying to figure out what to do with like items that need a hanger. Cause I don't have the soft material. I just reused what I already had and it has a carpet backing on it. So, uh, I haven't figured out what I'm going to do hanger wise. Um, so I'm just kind of like saving all my nylon windbreakers and letting them collect dust currently. So got to figure that out, but appreciate it, man. Save me the time of figuring out all the details and just screwed it together. Nike tiger woods collection, some golf shorts. Here's this little logo. Uh, Tiger Woods just recently announced he's not with Nike anymore and he's starting his own clothing brand. So I don't know what that's going to do to the market. I would have to imagine it's going to make it go up because people just want to wear the same thing over and over again. And now those are going to start getting less and less because they're not making them anymore. Um, but these are size 34, really high quality golf pants or golf shorts. I didn't look these up, but I would say if I had to guess 30 bucks, but if I was pleasantly surprised to 35, 40, I, you know, I wouldn't be shocked. Henron asks, do I usually go live every morning? I usually don't, to be honest. I just wanted to schedule this one because uh, I feel like when I make like a thrift haul video and it's like 40 minutes long, there's like only so many people that are interested in that for 40 minutes. So I'd rather go live, be able to integrate with asking questions uh, and do that kind of thing at the same time as going over some of these items. I paid $750 for this. This is a Brooks Brothers Milano. This is a good cut of Brooks Brothers, but I wouldn't say it's like a buy every time. But this one was 100% linen. has this really nice little, uh, you know, heathered checkered pattern on it. Um, so the fact that this is 100% linen, good size of XL and the Milano cut, I'm just stacking those things uh, to make it sell fast, get a little bit more money, probably list it for 30, be my guess, just a hunch, didn't look it up. All right, Mike says, put a screw under the fabric. That's what I do, makes a little nub to hang the hanger on while hiding the screw. Got to, got to head out. Want to say, hey, thanks for stopping by. And I appreciate the photo setup, man. Let's do a live sometime. Let's get it going. Timothy says, I have an S hook on the top of my angled photo board with a white plastic chain hanging down for the heavier items. Yeah, I need to figure out something like that that doesn't like add extra time. Uh, I did actually try what Mike said and put a screw underneath the fabric, but the backing on my carpet that I'm using doesn't allow it to like create a lip. It just lifts it completely. And then there's no lip unless I wanted it to be like visible in the photo. So I got to figure out something creative. Got to put my problem solving skills to the test, but haven't made it that far yet. Jenny says, what percentage of items you buy do you look up first at the thrift when you're buying a ton that can really slow you down but i know it's a gamble if you aren't perfectly versed on everything i would say with every month that i've thrifted i'm looking up less picking up more items um so i would say it just you know comes from experience being able to look up less i would say i look up about 15 to 20 percent um and then from those i'm usually keeping over 50 percent of those because uh, my instincts are usually pretty good on those items. Uh, so I'm usually only putting back maybe 10%. Uh, one item at like a small thrift store or, you know, a handful of items, maybe 5, 10 at one of my bigger stores. So uh, it does save me a ton of time though. You know, just having that knowledge right off back. 
Oh, this is a great tip. This is a great tip. This is what I do too. I recommend watching videos in 1.5x or 2, 2x to get the information quicker, especially on longer videos. Giant, that is a great tip. And that's what I do too. Because I don't have all day to just sit there, but I want to get the info. So I'm going to crank through it. I paid seven bucks for this vintage Nike jacket. Very basic windbreaker. And this tag is like very discolored, but this old white Nike tag is very collectible. And this was in perfect condition in a great size of XL. Uh, so I usually sell these for last one I sold for 25, but it had condition issues uh, and it was not size XL. I think it was size medium. So probably 35, if I had to guess. If you find one of those older Nike windbreakers and it has like crazy colors on it, you can be $150, $250. So definitely look those up and then try to find one similar to the style that you have. I paid 12 bucks for this Polo Ralph Lauren by swing jacket. These used to be called the Harrington jacket, but they are now called the by swing jacket. And make sure you list them as such because Harrington is a Vero because that is a completely different brand. This was size XL. Can this go here? I got to figure out how to do this. I, mean, I see people do this, but is that like horny? I don't know. Anyway, it was 30 bucks, half off, then 25% off that. So about 12 bucks. A size XL, I'm guessing this would be about 40 to 50 bucks. All right, now this is my last item. So if you have any questions, I'm going to go rapid fire when I'm done with this and I'll go until all the questions are answered. So if you have questions you want answered, uh, you let it go, let it rip in the chat here. Here we have a Travis Matthew camo golf windbreaker. Very nice performancey techie material. I did pay up. This was 25, so half off, and then the 25% off. So about 10 bucks. Only size medium. But this is full zip, hooded, got the camo. It's super stretchy, performancey, techy. It's got all the features. Polyester and spandex. I just know somebody is just dying to go golfing wearing this jacket. So I picked it up. The Travis Matthew polos, a bit saturated. I'd stick to good patterns. But the outerwear and sweaters, I still let them rip. Still a great brand. My bag's empty. Now I got to list all that stuff. Well, thank you guys so much for coming. I'm going to hop off here, get back to work, have some lunch with my family. I appreciate you guys being here. Uh, if you're catching the replay, make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I really appreciate you guys sticking with me uh, for this thrift haul. And yeah, we'll see you in the next one.